I'm Jake with Senka Sen, and today let's take a deep dive into countersinking. When designing a countersink into your part, there's four major things that we need to consider, three of which are gonna be determined by the screw type. So let's look at an example on the whiteboard here. In this example, we're gonna be using a quarter 20 screw. The three things that we're gonna get from that quarter 20 screw is gonna be the angle, the included angle of our countersink, the major diameter at the top of the flathead screw, and then the minor diameter at the bottom that's gonna be the through hole for that screw. On a quarter 20 screw, we can look at this on a couple different websites online, and you can also find this on the guidelines um, for a quarter 20 screw, flathead screw on our website. But the major diameter is gonna be 0.531, which is gonna be this one right here. That's gonna be the width, the diameter or the width of that countersink at the top. The minor diameter, which is gonna be the through hole for a quarter 20, is a 0.255 inch hole through. The included angle, is gonna be the same for all imperial countersunk or flathead screws. And that one is gonna be 82 degrees. On a metric screw, those are gonna be 90 degrees for our included angle. So it's important to know that the difference between metric and imperial is mostly the included angle. And then the determined factor is gonna be on the screw. Lastly, what's not determined by the screw type is the material thickness in which you're gonna be applying the countersink to. In this one, we're gonna say a half of an inch thick. That's gonna give us plenty of room in order to put a countersink into it. So when you're designing this, the minimum amount that the countersink needs to sink into the part in order for the screw to be flat and flush up on the top is gonna to be that major diameter of your screw. So that these, this mating surface here is gonna be completely sunk in. So the same diameter for the countersink is gonna be the same as the screw in order to get it fully engaged. So let's look at one example as if we thin this part up uh, a problem that we're gonna run into, and this is probably the biggest thing that you need to consider when you're designing a countersink in your part. If we go to an extreme and say that we're gonna have a 30,000 thick part, and it's only gonna be this thick, we can obviously see an initial problem that if our part is that thin, our screw is gonna stick far beyond uh, in the countersink than the bottom of it, which is gonna make us not be able to um, fully tighten the screw and have it engage in the mating part on the top. So we do a job on our website, so when you decide on your material for your part and you're drilling it down through our process and you select countersinking, if you were to select 30 thousandths material, we wouldn't let you do a quarter 20 countersink in the part. So if you're going all the way down in the material and you get on the website and you're like, it won't let me countersink this part, it might be because that that material thickness is too thin for that countersink that you're trying to decide on. All of these considerations and more information can be found on the countersinking guidelines on our website. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for more.